because I, I think there are ways that we can monetize our content and also our, you know, persona, whoever we are, and, um, our, you know, our personal brand. We were talking about that previously. And um, I, I believe it can be done. Do you want to jump into it now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I okay. mean, I'm, I'm both yeah, pumped yeah, about this. You know, yeah. I've just started real quick. I don't know if you know the whole story about me, but over the last probably it's we're shooting this in January and mm -hmm. or is it February? <laughs> no, it's January. So. January. <laughs> um, so we're shooting this in January, 2019. And really over the last 10, 10 months, give or take however many months, uh, I've been really looking into what I wanted to do with my online content. And I, I've had this streamlined gaming where I teach people how to make and sell board games for a while, three years. And really I, I wanted to start talking more about just me and not completely give up on the streamline gaming thing, but you know, create content that would be helpful for my family and friends. So over the last yeah. 10 months or so, I've been thinking, what would that content be about? And I realized that I've always been creative. I've always been caring and I've always been competitive. So I was like, after a, several months of debating what characteristics I wanted to, you know, make my content about, I just settled on those three main attributes so <laughs> I decided on that and then you know within the last three or four months I finally studied and researched all the all the, the software and hardware that I need to do that you know website podcast and microphones and all that and then about four months ago I finally made the $400 purchase for my traveling microphones and, <laughs> and recorder yeah I know it's a big step for me because you know I researched yeah. it for two months like okay after two months, I'm like, I think I want this, you know, <laughs> it's a big purchase, yeah. but I definitely want this because I keep going back to it, back to it. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then I finally break down, I get it and then start creating content with my friends and family, which is what I wanted. Uh, so that's about where I am. And I'm just now getting to where I'm publishing that content, you know, Damn. three or four months after starting to make it. So mm -hmm. that's where I am with the process of my personal brand. <laughs> How, where are you with yours? Wait, wait, before I tell you where, where I am, I want to ask you, uh, for you, what is your definition or what do you feel a, a personal brand is? Oh, man, that's a good question. Oh, actually, I think I have a good answer for this. Okay. Um, I can't think of the word right off my head. It, um, so I think I got this from Gary Vaynerchuk, but it's like your, re oh, reputation, that's the word. <laughs> I couldn't think of the, the word. So basically like your reputation, um, your personal brand, that's kind of how I see it. Mm. Um, more so personal brand, your reputation online is more of how I would see a personal brand. I mean, your personal brand is also offline, but the you can get a lot more people to see more about you and your personal brand online. So I think of it more as distributing your reputation online, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yes, yes, it does. Are you vlogging at the moment? I am for my personal brand. Yeah, well, actually for both, yes. But uh, so my, my content for my personal brand is I've developed a whole new strategy for my content. And basically it's create a big content. I don't know what you call it, pillar content or whatever. So like mm -hmm. this, what we're doing here would be a 30 to 60 minute podcast slash video or whatever and then with this mm -hmm. I can then edit it down to you know five to ten other videos and distribute those so on my my website my blog I will probably I usually put the the pillar content the the podcast that's what I've been doing mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. I have about six pieces of, of content there that's just you know here's a video of me and whoever talking and here's what we talked about and so that's what I'm doing on my website. And then on the social media platforms, I'm putting all the little pieces of content as well. So like, yeah, I'll, I'll, every other day I have Facebook and YouTube videos. And then every other day, opposite of that, I have, I put upload to my podcast, the audio files of what we, mm -hmm. me and my guests talk about. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm blogging, I guess, to answer your question. No, 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 no. <laughs> I have been, as as you know, like I I have been in the in the process of a renovating, I don't know what uh -huh. to call it, um, 
I, I, I spoke with this, this woman, <clears throat> this business mentor recently, and she said, you know what, people aren't really rebranding. When people talk about rebranding, they're not really rebranding because no one knew what their brand was at the first place. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, um, what are your thoughts on that? On- I, you know, I wasn't really going to say that I was rebranding. I'm not, but I was like, gosh, that, that would probably hurt somebody's ego to hear that. But it's true. A lot of people who were saying, oh, well, I'm rebranding. You didn't really know what they, who they were, you know, beforehand. Um, but I'm renovating. But what I mean by that is I'm, I'm changing. I'm deciding to be more of a personal brand. And one strategy that I was reading that that really made sense to me was choosing six topics so well, well the, for, let me back up before that uh-huh. to be, a, be an interesting character so be you know be someone who's interesting and um uh someone else referred to this kind of character as being a figurehead i, I don't know what that means as far as i'm as far as i'm concerned Think of it as, you know, your, it's your show. It's the Calvin show. What is going to be on the Calvin show this uh-huh. week? Gonna... <laughs> That's exactly what I ended what up is... naming it was the Calvin Keeney show. <laughs> oh, perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So, but, but I mean, I would, I would insert whoever's name, you know, right. and, and I so like, if you're someone watching this or listening to this podcast and you are saying to yourself, I want to be a personal brand. Well, think about it as, it's the insert name here show, you know, the Carla show, the Calvin Keeney show, it's your show. So one strategy that, uh, so, so think about it in terms of a show and, and thinking, think about, do you want to entertain people? Do you want to educate people? Like, what is it that you want to do and make sure that, you know, that that is served as part of your show. And of course, you know, you definitely want to make it interesting. And, and for being like an interesting character, I had the weirdest example come to me today, but it, I think it still works. If you are a an avid you know, Donald Trump supporter, for example, that means wearing your MAGA hat because that is really who you are. There's going to be people that won't like you, but those aren't your people. So the idea is to be yourself and to be authentic, that interesting character whoever that is to to go to your edges to be who you really are not like a fake you know person but to be who you are honestly and authentically and the people that like you will like you and the people that don't like you they won't like you <laughs> you know? I, I 100% agree with that that motto that's that's yeah, what i've been so, living these last 10 months exactly it's, one, exactly. it's actually it's very so, hard to actually figure out who you are and what you want to talk about it's way harder than people would think because they might think they know but then when they really dig down into it they're like oh maybe i'd like this other thing better so it took oh me oh my god while. that's exactly what i'm dealing with right now really that's exactly yes yeah oh, so that that's why you're what was it renovating <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm renovating because i'm like i'm thinking i'm like you know i really want to talk about that but maybe i really want to talk about that you know and so i feel like i don't want to put anything in, in like a permanent form to say this is what I'm doing because I might change my mind tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, here, here's something that, that helped me with that. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, here's what helped me with that. Um, for me, and this might help others, I don't know, but whenever I was going through the process of figuring out what I wanted to talk about, who I am, all that stuff, I, I kept thinking, oh, uh, well, I like tennis i like pickleball i like basketball i like sports i like video games board games uh but those are like things that i like to do those are activities so those are likely to change so what i really did was think well i actually i play tennis i play pickleball i play sports because i i love competing i love playing board games and card games because i love competing and i love working at being a resident assistant at a ranch for adults with disabilities because I care for people. I love caring for people. It's just like what, what I enjoy doing. I'll do it for uh, not a lot of money or even no money being caring, creative and competitive. That, and that's what I've noticed. So I think a lot of people, they might uh, brand themselves around an activity that they like. And then once they stop liking that activity, like for example, uh, you know, someone that's into rowing, 
I don't even know, <laughs> let's say they're into rowing or something fitness and then, well, they stop liking rowing, but you know, they still want to be healthy. So if they would have just branded themselves as a, someone that likes being healthy, then they could have switched more easily from being a rowing expert to a sure. whatever. So I think defining your attributes is probably a lot easier for a long-term success plan for your personal brand. At least that's my thoughts on it. <laughs> Here I'm three months in, so mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. just my experience, but. <laughs> no, I, I think that, that makes great. And actually I, I took a webinar, a course uh, recently, and I was thinking it was one thing, but I got something totally different out of it. And so this year I've been getting into Instagram, for example, and I really am enjoying, I guess it's, to me, that's almost like a micro blog because you're yeah. finding a picture, you know, or a video and you're writing a story or a caption and you're putting hashtags and that's it. Like a blog, like a real full blown blog post, like on WordPress, um, you know, that also takes a lot of work, but instead you're making this an ex was it post on Instagram, you know, and, 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 you know, and you're researching the right hashtags and it takes a lot of work, but it's just one little thing. But anyway, so I've been enjoying that. And I was taking this webinar where the woman asked, when people interact with your brand on Instagram, she was talking about Instagram though. When you, when people interact with your brand on Instagram, what emotions do you want to you want them to feel. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't thought about that. I was like, what emotions do I want them to feel? Hmm. <laughs> because the people who are feeling things are the people who do make purchases. So that was the, something for all of us to remember. So I started writing all of these adjectives on what I want people to feel. And I realized that what I want people to feel when they interact with my content was much bigger than internet famous. And it was much bigger than a dating website. And I realized there was so much more that I wanted to express as a person. So what were, you, what were some things you wanted to express? Well, so, so for example, I like a lot of the woo stuff, like, like, you know, like astrology uh -huh. and you know, stuff like that. And, and, you know, and I, it's been kind of interesting to me just, and I've been looking at different people's, uh, other people's um, uh, Instagram feeds and a lot of things are just like really like spooky and enchanting looking. And I like the way that looks and I like the way that makes me feel. And I'm thinking, you know, would I want to do something like that? Well, how much of that would I want to do? Or, you know, and I, and I'm, uh, so all of these, I feel so taking that, that answering that question in that webinar, asking what do I want people to feel, it enabled me to know that I have a lot that I want to do. And I have like several blogs and I've been feeling splintered because I just want to have it in one. I just want to have one blog that huh. expresses the real me. <laughs> I, I, and I, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so, so I feel like personal branding would be a better way for me to go as opposed to having these different blogs and, and niching myself because when I do the numbers, I'm not really doing that great. So I kind of feel like it's, <laughs> I think it's better to just consolidate it and be, let it be me. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a musician, I'm a performer. So I have no problem being a personality. You know, so <laughs> that's a good, that's a very good strength online. You know, like I, again, I told you yeah. a couple of years ago when I started making videos, it took me months to actually show that video to, to anyone, including my friends. And I was just so terrified of being on camera. Um, so that's look actually, at really, now. Yeah, look at me now. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> All confident and stuff. <laughs> So, I mean, I think that's a very good streak, having that performer personality coming online. I think that's, it, and what you said, really, it struck me because that's kind of what I lived. I lived, you know, over the last year, I, I kept creating content for my, my gaming website and that's fun for me and it helps people, which is good for me because my life goal is to help 100,000 or people in a positive and significant way. And I was telling Sheila, I want that because then that makes the world that uh, slightly better on average. So my yeah. daily life is on average better. So <laughs> if I can make people around me happier, then they will likely be happier and my life will be more enjoyable. So anyway, 
so that's my overall goal. And so I was able to do that some with the Streamline Gaming website, but my family and friends, the people that I knew that didn't make games, which is most of my close inner circle, I, whenever I had content, it wasn't, I wasn't like, hey, here's this piece of content that you might find helpful. It was just like, oh, I'm going to put this out there and to the people that I don't really know. And I love the fans there, but you know, it's different whenever it's like, hey, mom, I think this piece of content would help you in your everyday life. Like that would be fun to me. So as I noticed that, you have a question? Yeah. So, so you would create content for your mom is what you're saying? Or you uh, find- With the, great, the gaming website, I didn't, but I noticed over time that I wanted to, but she's not interested in making games really. So what happened is, is kind of what you did. I was like, maybe I should just start writing about what I love and not necessarily on the gaming website, which is why I started calvinkini.com, my personal brand. And mm -hmm. really that, like, I feel like we've lived that same realization, like, Oh, I'm making all this stuff that I'm interested in, but I also just want to be me <laughs> and I can yeah. still do the, the other stuff. I can still do, you can do the magician uh, musician stuff and I can do the gaming stuff, but, I can also just be Calvin Keeney <laughs> and that might oh, be interesting to me. But, but Calvin Keeney can also, and as your personal brand, you're, you can, you're not limited. You can share, you know, content for your gaming, you know, your gaming content, even your course, you can share um, the content that you might create with, with your family or for your family. Um, you could share, you know, you know, healthy or sports, um, lifestyle, whichever is that for you. So, I mean, you, you don't have to not share anything. However, the other part of the strategy I wanted to, to show you. So I said, the, the guy said this, well, the strategy that I read that, that actually sounded really, really good. Um, he said to choose six, six topics that you really want to talk, that you want to, um, talk about and make it a goal to interview three people in each of those topics. So that way you also branch out in those niches and, you know, and choose people who might have some of the, you know, have a bit of a following if you can, you know, and, um, and then you also get some of their audience as well. So that's just something to think about. If you have a podcast or a video for anyone that's listening, but I'm definitely talking to you too, Calvin. Um, <laughs> you know, like, so for example, talk to people in sports, talk to people who are doing sports or, something that that interests you um you know or if there's people other people in the gaming industry uh, that that create their own games or people that you want to you know that, that you'd like to have a conversation with your podcast is a great uh you know place for that so like finding opportunities to also interact with other influencers or other personal brands in those topics is also very strong so that's another great strategy so i'm 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 really excited about this particular strategy myself and i just need to figure out what it is i'm doing first and then i'm gonna hit it <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> where i was you know back in last summer figuring out what my topics were going to be i settled on the three. Oh, but i mean i definitely had at least six that i could have chose from like uh, my, I, at one point i i thought about calling my show Calvin the Curious because I'm extremely curious and I just love I like learning that. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was it. all of these words. Of, of course, you notice that they're alliteration. They all start with C. I love alliteration. Because my overall goal is like, I can create Calvin the Caring, the book, or and Calvin the Competitor, mm -hmm. the book. And like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so my mind long term is like, I just, I don't know what it is about alliteration, but I love it. It's so... <laughs> It just so happened that I was able to find uh, three different words that start with C that worked for me. So <laughs> the coach Calvin, you know, because I coach tennis and pickleball. <laughs> what is pickleball? Pickleball is a lot like tennis. It's it's like on half the size of a court of a tennis court, and you mm -hmm. use a, a like a paddle that's twice as big as a ping pong paddle, but it's hard. Oh. And then you use a wiffle ball. It's oh. yeah, but it's a ten tennis net, uh, basically, and the tennis court. When you play outside, that's the normal setup, and big pad, big ping pong paddle, and a wiffle ball. <laughs> wow, I've never heard. 
Yeah, basically you can't hit it out of the air when you're close to the net, but it plays a, similar to tennis, but there's a lot of differences enough. What, one thing that's great about it is it's a lot easier to learn how to play and hit the ball. So mm-hmm. it's really popular in the, in the retirement community. And I think the average player is actually like over 60 years old that plays pickleball. Oh. So it's, it's, a, it's growing very fast, <laughs> particularly here. How, how did you get involved in pickleball? I had heard about it over the last two, two or so years. Uh, and I, it always was interesting, the word. Uh, so, so one day me and my brother were playing tennis on the, a tennis court and someone, a couple of courts down had this pickleball court set up. We didn't know that's what it was at the time, but we looked over and like, that game looks really fun. And so we went over and asked them, what are y'all playing? And they're like, pickleball. And it's like, Oh, that's pickleball. <laughs> so yeah. then I said, Anyway, another year or two, a year, or year and a half goes by. I don't really think much of it, but. I see it on a vlog. Some uh, actually, Gary Vaynerchuk was playing in Austin on a, on this. This is a crazy story, right? So it's, he's playing on this pickleball court, a private pickleball court in Austin. Okay, and I'm like, okay, that looks so fun. He's playing against Andre Agassi and uh, Andy Roddick for for a fundraiser or some event, some Andy Roddick Foundation fundraiser and i was like man that looks so fun and i that's drew my brother i was like drew we gotta go play this and i showed him the video he's like yeah that looks fun so we go and play it here in austin this was last march or april and we play it and immediately i'm hooked it's like everything i love about tennis which is being up close to the net and hitting the ball out of the air uh, so net net game and so I, I immediately fall in love and then six months later I, th- through things like me realizing I want to be a coach, I love coaching. I'm like, I come and ask the guy at the tennis center and pickleball center, hey, I, I want to coach. And I'm now one of three pickleball coaches in like the entire city of Austin. <laughs> <laughs> and but th- the really crazy part is like uh, probably a month into coaching or something, one of my friends I met through pickleball said hey you want to play sometimes like yeah sure he's like hey this guy this guy's house we're having a game there so me and my brother go across the town 30 minutes away and we get out there and I'm like this looks so familiar and I'm looking around and I'm like this is that court that Gary was playing on in the vlog that convinced me to play pickleball and I'm here now like it was so it was kind of trippy really (laughs) So it didn't have all the banners and stuff, but I was like, this view looks so familiar. And I finally asked the owner, I was like, did you have Andy Brodick and Andre Agassi and Gary be here? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, this is the place. So it, was, it was like such a like, <laughs> it, that was a cool, that was a cool moment. <laughs> wow. That's very cool. 